Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about collections in Java or the collections framework in Java. I must say that this is probably the most important concept of the Java programming language which you will be using heavily whenever you are working in any production grade application. So let's understand the collections framework and the different classes and the utilities available inside the collections framework. This is going to be a theoretical lecture because there is a lot of ground to cover in this lecture. So we will only focus on understanding the relationship between the classes, why those classes are created because each class has a different purpose in this framework. And we will ob obviously talk about the hierarchy as well. In the upcoming sessions, we will go into the hands-on exercise of some of the most popular collections. We will not be able to provide hands-on of all the collections classes which you which you can see on the screen because then it is going to take a very very long time to complete this concept. But we will cover the most popular ones or the most used ones out of this particular framework. So let's get started. As you can see there, let's first understand some of the symbols here and let me just zoom this in a bit so that it's visible. Yep, now the, I have just increased the resolution a bit. So you can see there are three different symbols or legends here. You see this oval shape which is called interface. So you can see some interfaces here. Then you see this uh, rectangular blue box which is called abstract class. And you can see some of these blue boxes. And then you see the purple box which is called the class. And you see some classes here, these ones. So for now we are currently we haven't covered the concept of interfaces and abstract classes but we will cover that in the coming lectures and for understanding the collections hierarchy right now the at least the concepts of it you don't need to be fully aware of the concept of interfaces or abstract classes so let's dive deeper into the framework itrable is basically an interface uh, to to give you a very simple definition of an interface interface basically is sort of a declaration which will tell you what kind of classes will be present under the interface. For example, if you have to let's say store all the cars and all the bikes and all the bicycles and all the trucks from all around the world, then you can create an interface called vehicle and create all of these classes under the interface. And these classes will be about cars, about trucks and about other kind of vehicles. So an interface is a generic blueprint of specific class implementation. That's a very simple definition of an interface. And like I said, we will go deeper into this concept in the upcoming lectures. So that was about interfaces. Similarly, when we talk about abstract classes, the next legend here, abstract classes are also similar to interfaces where they provide you a generalization, but at the same time, Abstract classes provide you a way to also write some concrete implementation. For example, if we take the example of a bank account. So there in a bank, you have different kinds of accounts. You have savings accounts, you have recurring accounts, you have current accounts, and there are many other different types of accounts. So there would be some common implementation and logic which will be applicable to all the account types for example an account must have an account holder that account holder must have a valid kyc done for example so there would be some sort of common logic which will be applicable to all of these right so that common logic so you have two options either you can write that common logic again and again in the savings account class in the current account class in the loan account class etc etc or you can write it at a central place and just refer it from there so that's where you will you will use abstract classes. So you will create an abstract class of an account and then you will create these child classes under this account class, which will be the savings account class, the loan account class, the current account class, etc. So this is a very lightning introduction to you about interfaces and abstract classes and class as we know is basically a concrete blueprint which holds data and logic together. So here I table is an interface which will just specify that all the kinds of data structure which can be iterated which can be looped over should be present under this particular interface that's why we created this interface so 
under iTable, we have this collections interface and this will govern that everything which will present under the collection interface will be holding some sort of a collection of items. Now we look at the next set of interfaces. We see a set interface. We see a list interface and we see a queue interface. When we talk about the set interface, these three different types of interfaces represent three different properties of collection and these properties are exclusive of each other. For example, if we talk about set, so set has a property that everything which you put into set will be unique. It will never ever tolerate or contain any duplicate elements. That's the property of set. So now you can see whenever you have a scenario where there is a strict constraint that your collection should never have duplicates, you will use sets. When we talk about lists, list is probably the most lenient representation of a collection. It can store anything. It can store duplicates as well. It will not raise an error or a warning if you store same element multiple times. It will happily store it. But at the same time, the list is basically an index based collection. You can access the elements starting from the index zero till the last element. That's the basic value proposition. So whenever you have a requirement where you want to access the elements into a predefined sequence and one by one, then you should use list. Also, the order is fixed here. The first element will always come after the zeroth element. The second element will always come after the first element. So whenever you iterate over this particular list, you will never have a scenario where you do not know the order of the elements being accessed. They will always be accessed in a predefined order. So it's basically we can call it as an indexed ordered collection which can hold duplicates. Then the third one is Q here. So Q is basically as you can this is basically inspired from real world. So think of any Q if you if you go to buy something at a grocery store or if you go to buy a ticket at a, at a railway station or you go to the check in counter at the airports. So you stand in a queue and the concept of queue is that it works on a concept of first in first out. The person who first went into the queue will be the person first being served and coming out of the queue. And if the second person come that has to be standing behind the first person. And once the first person is served and and goes out of the queue, the second person comes at the front of the queue and that that particular person is served. So you can see it's uh, if you have to store that kind of behavior or if you have to implement that kind of behavior in a Java program, then you would use queues. So so this was about the top level interfaces which are set list and queue and out of these list and set are very very popularly used very heavily used in any kind of Java enterprise grade application. Now there are more interfaces like sorted set navigable set and DQ sorted set is basically forcing additional constraint on the set that the elements will be unique at the same time you can also have the elements into a sorted order that sorting can be an incremental sorting or decremental sorting that depends but the whole idea is that it will be sorted similarly navigable set brings another navigation kind of properties dq is basically a double ended queue where the elements can be inserted and removed both from the front and from the back so there are the different properties of these interfaces but like i said the most popular ones are these three ones now let's talk about the abstract classes so the abstract classes you see here are abstract collection abstract set abstract list abstract queue abstract sequential list generally you will not be using these directly you don't need to use them directly but you should be aware that they exist if you have a very specific case where you want to use these abstract classes you can use them in java program but most of the time you don't need to use them and most of the times you will be dealing with either the interfaces or you will be dealing with the concrete classes now this lecture is, is getting a bit long so I will like to stop this lecture here. So we covered about the interfaces part of the collection and we also understood a bit about the abstract classes though we are not going to use abstract classes in much detail in the programs. In the next session we will cover the second part of this collection framework or the remaining part of this collections framework which is around the classes. The reason I'm parking this to the next session because 
it is going to be a very detailed session where we will talk about all of these classes and these classes are the ones which are very very heavily used in your java program so if you like this video a thumbs up would be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thanks and we'll meet again in the next session